Alright guys, time to cry back again today. I hope you're all doing well and enjoying your day so far and today is Saturday, only a couple of days away from the start of this super week that we're going to be having from Monday through all the way to Sunday. Every single matchup in advance of the major that's coming up in a few weeks time is going to be played this coming week. Pretty crazy stuff, but what a lot of people have been talking about lately, Slasher especially, you know how it tends to go, regarding the practice situation in the game right now. The fact that when they play in these pro matches, they're playing on these 60 hertz servers. We talked about this last year as well in Modern Warfare. The fact that in the pro games they're playing on 60 hertz servers but in practice supposedly they can't play on the same server types last year I remember we were talking about the fact that the spawns even were different but even then it's still a very different playing environment on a 60 hertz refresh tick rate server compared to like a 20 hertz or whatever the normal custom game servers are which they are normally practicing on that also then has some implications for what the weapon meta looks like and uh, well certainly something that we're going to run through today enjoy to hear your thoughts in the comment section below like if you guys enjoyed the video subscribe if you are new as always I'd greatly appreciate it really helps out the channel Thank you very much indeed for doing that. So, the Challenges Elite stuff just to start with. They're built by Gamers Team, that being Godorex, Pentagram, Kismet, Panda. Pretty, uh, well, high-profile Challenges Team in the North American region. Relegated from the first Challenges Elite. I don't know if technically they've been, like, relegated yet, but if you don't come in the top four out of the eight teams, then you get effectively relegated and have to battle back through the gauntlet. But um, at the same time, I think, uh, well, it's not like they're officially relegated in the sense they've gone down to, like, the elimination type thing, where they then have to battle their way back through. They may still make it back in next time, but uh, well, not exactly where they would hope to have placed this first challenge at least. They will, as the current says, have to re-qualify for the next qualify if they want to get back in. Zaptius then says over at the West, our team, mind-blowing my team, has lost only three series the entire year. Gotta keep improving though, back to the lab. And uh, well, as he says right here, secure the number one spot in the first season standings. So this is how it looks. All the teams um, in that region have played up against each other in all the challenges matchups. So the top four, I think the top two maybe like get an automatic buy into like the playoffs thing that they're doing the top four also make it and then the bottom four teams uh, will have a difficult time and they will have to battle their way back through in the gauntlet to make their way back into the world challenges elite series two or whatever which uh, runs alongside stage two certainly something to keep your eyes on and i am very intrigued to see what happens with this wester team right because certainly they've been dominating the challenges elite for quite a while now and so the question is next season if the league expands like what is going to happen with these players are we going to talk about later today some players that have a make or break years from my perspective like players that have yeah, maybe they're on the borderline. If they have a bad year, they might be out. And well, things can change very quickly this season with these new 14-day contracts coming into effect. Paul X on this Wester team was already offered one with the London Royal Ravens. And if another opportunity like that comes up, will some of these guys dip from this Wester team? Or um, even would an organisation look to just pick up the entire squad next year? Personally, I don't think that's going to happen. If you want to compete at the highest level, it probably makes more sense to mix some of the best talents from the Wester team and some of the other teams in the Challengers Elite region and uh, yeah, bring them in with some... Uh, you know, traditional pro players that have done well the last several years. Maybe that's an option that some of these teams will go down, but certainly very interesting to see how this will develop. So much great talent over here. Wester official say contract is official. They did like another bait tweet like this. I think Craig pointed out as well on the 27th of January and well, they didn't actually announce what it's going to be. Some people are looking at this and saying they're signing with an organization, but I don't believe that's going to be the case of what Chrome was saying. Let's talk then about this 60 hertz situation. So as Chrome says, this has happened way back actually now on the 13th of February, but look at all these XM4s. Right? We've got four XM4s fours on one team the other team we've got a you know one ak-74u three xm4s on the other squads and well this is happening on a fair few maps the likes of a well checkmate for example checkmate hardpoint checkmate control a lot of the time even though the krig could be good on those maps in theory it's the xm4 that tends to dominate and on the servers that we tend to be playing on in like not necessarily league play but also like you know custom games more generally it feels like the Krig is kind of strong, and yes, the XM4 is very good, but a lot of pros tend to say that on these 60 hertz servers that they play on, so 60 tick rate refresh servers, which supposedly they have for the CDL matches, but they don't have for regular custom gameplay, then, um, well, supposedly, things play a little bit differently, and the XM4, because it fires relatively fast, is actually even better on a 60 hertz tick server environment than it is on the practice servers. And this has uh, well been an issue last year as well, the fact that when they're practicing the pros, they don't necessarily play the same game as they are in the professional side. You've also got to ask some questions that's been talked about a bit lately as well regarding search and destroy. The fact that it's been very difficult actually for these teams to practice search, not only because they play a slightly different tick rate, but also because, well, teams play it a little bit differently, right? If they want to play up against a search and destroy star team to try and get S&D practice, it's a bit difficult to do so because those S&D stars largely play the game very different. They play a lot more like one-on-one -on -one heavy, like chow heavy, where they're just going to play for kills in effect and don't really um, yeah, play too much as a team. Whereas in a professional team match, the 
teams are playing a lot more like a cohesive unit, at least uh, if they're playing at a very high level, which means uh, getting good search practice is pretty tough. And I think Optic were talking about that, the fact that it is somewhat difficult to actually get decent search practice at the present time, you know, against the teams that they're currently being able to play against. So maybe it just takes actually going into matches to get this kind of practice. In the same way, to get practice on the proper 60 hertz servers, it actually, well, takes you to play pro league matches, which of course they've only had the time to do for like the last week or so. And now we're straight into the absolute gauntlet of the Super Week. It also was mentioned by your boys at Dakar Academy that um, actually a London on a checkmate were actually using a fair few 74U. So it's not necessarily the case that the XM4 is just completely dominant. But as Parasite says on the 14th of February, wish we could practice on 60 hertz. It is practically a different game we are playing. As Slasher says, shouldn't be playing on something we cannot practice on. Being saying it since last year, it is just so dumb. Game feels different. Got to get used to it for real. Can't get used to it though. You're practicing on 20 hertz 99% of the time. I would rather play the matches on 20 hertz. So pretty interesting, right? Because the custom games in the game at the present time, this has um, been the case for the last few years. The developers, uh, maybe they don't have the bandwidth or the resources or whatever to actually put up 60 hertz servers for everyone in custom games. But to, well, I, I think it can be done in other esports. So, you know, Call of Duty just isn't there yet. Once again, it seems to happen every single year. But a 20 hertz server is not quite the same. It basically means that the information is going between the client, which is like you playing in the server side, only 20 times per second, which creates a bit of a different environment where let's say you fired two bullets between one of the ticks, then, uh, you know, those bullets will then register at the same time. It feels that like you die very quickly in certain situations and that uh, you can't get away. Maybe someone player comes around a corner, but you don't get that information till a little bit later because the server tick rate is lower. If you have a 60 hertz server, then those issues kind of get ironed out. And as well as Parasite and Slasher were saying, look, it's practically a different game. It feels so much better to play on, or at least uh, different at the very least. And the Slasher is saying, look, given we can't practice on this, should we just be forced to play on 20 hertz as well? I mean, I'm, I'm not really sure. Don't see too much discussion on this, but these guys are talking about it, of course, at the highest tier of the pro level. And as Fellow says in reply, it looks like you kill an absolute light speed on 60 hertz. Yeah, you do at times. It's one of those things where your sense feels different too. Like when you play pubs, then go into custom games. Supposedly, I haven't really felt this experience, but I'm sure like the pros and the people who play the game a lot, maybe have felt this a little bit more. The fact that, uh, you know, when you're going through different server types, different uh, tick refresh rates, because I think pubs is maybe 60 hertz and then um, yeah, 20 hertz custom game servers. Uh, well, maybe it feels a little bit different. Your sensitivity feels different. The aim assist options are a little bit different. It's a, you know, the response curves and stuff like that maybe operate a little bit differently on the different hertz tick rates. This may be just the pros looking into things and um, yeah, a little bit too much and being a little bit conspiratorial in that sense. I'm not even sure if that's a word, but certainly something that we may have to look at going forward. Just a couple of things to finish off the video. This from Rambo Ray, right? There's been a lot of discussion regarding league play as of late. And well, still, you guys were talking about it in the comment section below yesterday. Things not getting fixed as yet. Rambo says, look, a few things he would love to see fixed. Functional pre-made classes, streaks reset upon death. This, I think, is really the big one for me. It's so frustrating. Like, every time you play a hardpoint, hardpoint is so great. Whenever you get it in league play, fantastic. Absolutely love it. But the problem is, you know, if it's a close game, if it's going 250 to 200, if it's going 250 to 220, you know the last 30 seconds of that game are just going to be flooded with streaks. You've got napalm strikes, you've got artillery missiles or artillery strikes, you've got cruise missiles coming in, you even got choppers potentially coming in at certain points. It's absolute chaos. Um, and I really wish that could get potentially fixed, right? Because they've done it for professional play, like proper bros play on the situation where the streaks reset as in a traditional game. But for some reason, League Play still operates on the public match system where everyone gets their fair share. And so maybe they don't want to make it, you know, for new public match players, they don't want to understand, they don't want to, you know, have it difficult to explain the fact that, yeah, the streaks operate differently in league play but I mean all these players are used to it surely from previous games the fact that you go on a streak and you get a kill streak like it's not um, I don't know it doesn't seem too complicated to me and as he says although not a bug fix it'd be nice to have a ranking system which actually keeps me involved in the moment to moment progress versus everyone and matches you against people who actually have a similar progress which would uh, well certainly be logical right it would make sense if you're in masters to play other people potentially in masters that are in a similar situation to yourself so you actually might get a, a relatively competitive game the problem is in league play right now even though um, well, some would argue it isn't a problem in the sense that if you want to play kind of um, skill-based matchmaking free lobbies, not like they're always skill-based matchmaking free, but a lot of the time the league play lobbies are easier than the public match lobbies. That's just my experience, which um, isn't necessarily what I wanted to see, but at the end of the day it has still been more fun to me to play than it was some of the other ones right now. This actually, the subliners dropped their New York subliners 2021 drop one. thought it's honestly some of these were pretty nice. You guys can uh, well see right here. At least they put a fair bit of effort into them. There were some optic ones that came out as well yesterday. They said, well, hashtag soon was revealed right here. People were kind of clowning this a bit on the Reddit because, uh, well, a lot of these, uh, you could argue, look like they've been made in Microsoft Paint. Some of these are Chicago t-shirts right here. You could imagine these, like, hanging up in a gift shop or something. But, so, you yeah, know, at the end of the day, it's a uh, merchandise. People will buy it. That is, uh, well, that is kind of how it goes. And this 
as well. So yesterday, GG Breaking Point say the 19th of February was the day that Optic Gaming won at CWL Paris 2017. You guys might remember this is a bit of a dramatic event. It was the SWC event. The um, well, the game was delayed because there was like a Just Dance finals going on beforehand. So the CDL matches on the CWL games got delayed. Thankfully, that's not really the case nowadays. Then map one had to get replayed for some like power issue that happened. And you can see Clayster on the left right here wasn't particularly happy. You can see the middle around his neck. I don't know, you guys might remember this if you've been around a while. Like Clayster, after he received his medal on the stage, he like threw his medal across the stage or something because he was so frustrated at the fact that he got seconds. And then as he says, ah, oh, yes, I remember this fondly. As you can see, me on the left, I was very happy and proud of the second place finish because they, you know, they got three and very up to get the finals. That was the phase team. The medal toss was savage. Loved that mindset. But so, yeah, I don't know. It was kind of funny to see at the time. Intrigued to hear your thoughts on all this stuff in the comment section below. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy it, I'd greatly appreciate a like on the video. It really helps out the YouTube algorithm that you enjoyed this content. A lot of people like you may enjoy this content as well. And I'll grow the competitive Call of Duty community. Thank you for watching as always. Take care. And I will see you next time.